In this video, we're gonna cover the core framework, which is gonna help you create consistent and responsive layouts with ease. Now, some of the things you can do with the core framework include creating custom grids and layouts, adding styling like padding, shadows, color, alignment, and a bunch more. And so to start off with, what we're going to do is take a look at this pre-built four wide column layout that you see on your screen. And I'm gonna show you how it's utilizing the framework to get the layout that you see. Then we're gonna build our own custom layout. And through that process, we're going to add in a lot of these framework classes as we go to sort of build on the framework and make it so that you have a comprehensive understanding of the power of the core framework. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at one of the existing Oxy Ninja core layouts that exists in the design library and kind of analyze how it was built. So let's go to library, design sets, core, go to the sections and elements, content, and then we're gonna choose this four column services here. Now, if I expand my structure panel, you can see how this is built so far. Now this element right here is called columns in the structure panel, but it's actually a div. And inside of that, we have four divs. If we take a look at the classes attached to what I'll refer to as our wrapper div, you can see these are the columns that it takes to build this particular layout, which may look a little bit complicated, but it's not because we're gonna break this down for you one by one. So the first class is essentially like a base class. So with this, you need to determine how many columns do you actually want in a range from one to six with some slight variance based on your screen size. So like for instance, on a mobile device, it's one or two. And then there's a few other things that you can look at in the documentation here as well to determine how wide a particular screen size can go. But on the desktop, you can range it from one to six. And in this case, we have the class C columns four giving us this four wide layout. Now you'll notice if we switch over here to one of these divs that there is nothing defined on these in terms of their width. That is handled automatically for you thanks to that kind of baseline class here. We'll create our own grid in just a minute which might make that a little bit more clear as to what I mean, but essentially you don't have to worry about setting widths on any of your divs inside of your column. That's all handled for you based on this class here. Now you also have the option to configure how this layout is going to appear as your screen size shrinks. And that's what these two classes are right here. So if we take a look at the screen size selector here in Oxygen, you have a few different options. So in terms of how this is going to behave, you have XL large, which is just the letter L, then you have medium and small. Now XL is going to be 1400 pixels and below. So slightly different than your page container, unless it just so happens yours is 1400. Then large is going to be less than 992, medium is 768, and then small is less than 480. So if we go back over here and take a look at these classes, essentially, as you can see with this class, what's going to happen is at less than 992, then this column's layout is going to shift to two wide instead of four wide. And then at 768 and below, it's going to shift to one wide instead of two. So if we shrink our screen size here, you can see what I'm talking about. So at less than 992, it changes to two wide, and then 768, it's one wide, and you can see it carries that down to the smallest breakpoint. So these are all configurable as well. So if you want it at less than 992 to be three wide, you can just change this to L hyphen three. And then if you want this to be one wide at you know less than 480 instead of 768, this would become S1. So to demonstrate that, let's go ahead and delete L2 and M1, and we're just gonna walk down these selectors. So C columns, and then we're gonna go L hyphen three, and then we'll go C columns M hyphen two, and then last but not least, C columns S1 is going to be the last one here. So now what we have is L3, M2, and S1. So it's basically gonna reduce our screen width one by one all the way down. So let's take a look at how that actually behaves now. So page container, we have no change because we did not use the XL class. 992, it drops to three. 768, it drops to two. And then at our smallest one, it drops to one. So in terms of your sizing here, you have XL down to small, which corresponds exactly with these breakpoints as you just saw. Now these sizes actually add even more flexibility because for anything else other than related to screen breakpoints, the sizes range from extra small all the way up to extra, extra large. So you can think of this just like a t-shirt. It goes extra small, small, medium, large, extra large, and then extra, extra large. And this is used basically everywhere else across your site. So for instance, if we take this leftmost div here and let's say we wanna add some padding to it, what we can do is just simply type the word padding and you can see it's giving us all of those size options based on what we just selected. So something realistic that we might use in this particular layout would be padding small, 
So you can see it adds that padding in for us automatically. Now just to compare, if we take this second one, we can go padding hyphen M, and you can see it will add just a bit more padding for us. Now in this particular case, that doesn't look good because it's not consistent, so I'm going to delete that. The other thing is, if you look at this heading here, you'll notice it has a very similar spacing using that small size, in this case because it's C margin bottom S, but if we type the word margin, then you'll find all the different size options like we just discussed, from extra small all the way up to extra large. So again, these sizing options are used basically everywhere across your site. In the case of padding, if you use the word padding, that is going to be all sides of the element you're working on. And then you also have the option for any of the directions. So padding top, you can see, padding bottom, left and right are also there. In the case of margin, you have right and bottom as your options. So if we go margin right, you can see those are available, and then margin bottom. So those are all of your sizing options. Now, one other thing before we go create our own layout is I wanted to go back to our wrapper here and let's take a look at this other class. Let me delete this here. We have one other class we haven't touched on yet, which is columns gap. So this one is relatively self-explanatory, but it does follow the same sizing convention that we just discussed from extra small all the way up to extra, extra large. And that is what dictates the spacing between the far edge of one div and the edge of the other div. So if we take a look at these, you can see that Excel class is what's dictating that white space between these divs here. Now, just to demonstrate this a little bit further, let's go ahead and delete this Excel class and we'll just type in gap and we'll go with something like medium. So you can see now it added the gap between all of our divs. So now what I wanna do is go ahead and delete this whole section and we're gonna build our own layout here. So if we go back, we're gonna to go to basics section, and then let's stick in a div, which is again going to be our wrapper. So now we need to decide how many columns do we want this div to have. So we'll just start by typing columns, and then let's use a three wide layout. So we're gonna go C columns three. That's going to stretch our div for us automatically. There's nothing else we need to do with this one just yet, but I am going to expand my structure panel so you can see what I'll do next. Now what I'll do is add in another div, and let's do some configuration to this before we duplicate it. So I'm gonna go padding, we'll set this to small, and then I'm gonna use the class C hyphen shadow to add a box shadow effect. And then an alignment class we can use is C hyphen left. So if we click that, then everything inside of our container here is going to be left aligned. What I'm gonna do is just stick in an image element. And so now we have the beginnings of a column layout here, which works very, very well and is super simple to set up. So now what I'm going to do is take my div here and I can just duplicate it, one, two, and you can see now this column's layout fits perfectly. I didn't have to set the width on any of these divs. Again, that is coming from the fact that we use this class C columns three. We probably would want to add some gap between these because we added the shadow class. So let's go with gap and then we'll use small. And then just so you can see what happens when you have more than three here, I'll just duplicate this a couple more times and you can see it all fits in there super nice. We're going to do some cool stuff creating these custom layouts, so I'm gonna swap out these images to be unique so you can see some of the changes we make with a bit more clarity. All right, so I have these images swapped out, and there's a few more things we're probably going to want to do on our wrapper here. So of course, we haven't set any behavior as the screen shrinks, so that's gonna be something important here because as these images start to collapse, it's gonna get pretty small. So let's take a look at 768, and those images are almost indistinguishable because they're so small. And then definitely at less than 480, it will be very difficult to make out what they actually are. Let's step back up to our all devices and we'll add in the appropriate classes. So because the oxygen search function makes adding these classes really easy, I'm gonna just type in L hyphen two. So we'll look for C columns L two, and then we're gonna go M one. So C columns M one is going to make it so that on mobile devices, we only have one image wide from basically 768 down. So at page container, there's no change. Then at less than 992, it goes to two wide. And then at 768 and below, it drops to one wide. Same thing is true here for less than 480, because again, we did not set a class for the S one, but of course we don't need to because we already set it as M1. So that's just gonna carry down to our smallest breakpoint. So that's how you can build your own custom grid, but we're gonna take it even further now. So what I'm gonna do at this point is duplicate this section because we're gonna make some changes here utilizing the special columns classes. So I'm gonna come back here to our main wrapper div. I'm gonna go here to our C columns three and I'm going to delete this. 
Now in the documentation, of course, you can see there's a number of existing classes there for special columns. So what we're going to do in this case is type C columns, and then we'll go to hyphen three. And what's gonna happen here is then our layout here is split up into a fractional layout. So essentially this is two fractions on the left-hand side and three fractions of the available spaces on the right-hand side. Now you can swap this around. So instead of two, three, you could go three hyphen two. So C columns three hyphen two gives you essentially the same thing, but just in reverse. Another example would be like a three, one layout. So with these images, it's gonna be kind of small, but just so you can see, three, one is a perfectly viable layout. So that can give you a lot of flexibility. Now I'm going to delete this. And again, I'm just gonna duplicate this same section because I wanna be able to show you these changes. So what I wanna do is essentially make this div right here stretch to the far edges of this one to basically take up two squares. So what we can use is the column span class. So if we type in call and then span, you can see our options from two to six. So I'm gonna go C call span two. And now it takes up all the available space there. Then you can do the same thing with row span classes. So if we go row span is two, click on that, then it's going to fit everything nicely for us. Now, one thing to consider is how this behaves on mobile as your screen starts to shrink. So let's go ahead and take a look at less than 992. This row span is still set up, so we would actually want to essentially reverse that. So right now we're looking at less than 992, which is of course our L selector. So what we're going to do is go row span L hyphen one, and then we'll go call span L hyphen one, add that in there. And then now it's going to behave more in line with the original class that we had from our wrapper div here, which is at L, it's a two wide layout. If we step back up to our all devices screen width, you can see that the layout we configured is still available. So that's a really cool layout. What I'm going to do now is go back to up to our original section here and duplicate this. And then what I'm going to do is change this to be a two wide layout. And then we're gonna have alternating text and images. So let's go ahead and remove this C call three and we're gonna change it to columns two. And then over here, I'm going to delete this image. Let's add in a heading and we'll use the CH2 to style that. And then we'll go margin, bottom, medium. And then we'll just add in a text element here I'm going to do essentially the same thing over here. So we have a typical alternating heading and image layout. And so this looks perfectly reasonable right out of the box on your desktop screen sizes that is. We're gonna take a look in just a moment at how this behaves on mobile and how you can fix the clunky behavior of the way this is going to align. Now, one thing you can consider doing is on your wrapper div here, you can add the class of stretch. So it's C hyphen stretch, and that's going to make your divs match the height. But what I actually wanna show you is how this is going to look as we drop our screen sizes here. So at less than 768, what's going to end up happening is we have a situation where there's two text elements that back up to each other. We can essentially use a class to push this up above the image here. So what I'm going to do is select this div so we're going to use the row start class. So this is C row start. And then remember we're at the 768 breakpoint. So we're going to use the M selector and we're gonna go M one like that. And now what ends up happening is it pushes this headline above our image. So then we have our text element with an image, then a text element with an image. And we only had to change one thing, which was just simply adding that other selector. Then if we go back up to our desktop screen size, you can see it still maintains that alternating image and text layout as you can see. Again, that was just thanks to this row start M1 class. You can do the same thing with a column instead. You just simply change it to call start. So C call start hyphen M hyphen two, for instance, instead of row start. So you have the option for both column and row. Now the framework classes extend even further. So what we can do is some other styling things. For our headings, for instance, if we were to add the class of C heading, then you can see you have dark accent and light. So let's go ahead and choose accent here. And then on this class, maybe you want it to be the darker version. So C heading dark is what you would use here. And you can see that takes us down to our core heading dark color. Now the sizing classes we've already talked about also apply to things like text as well. So if we go C text, then you can add the sizing selector that you want. So if you want it to be medium, you can see it looks like that. And then we could also change it to C text large. That's gonna make it bigger. Then of course you could even step it up to Excel if you want. So we'll just go text Excel like this. And then of course you have all of your color options like light, 
dark, accent, accent, alt, all of those colors. Same thing is true for all of these headings. Of course, we added an H2 class here, but it ranges anywhere from H6 all the way up to H1. There's also framework classes for buttons. So if we stick a button element in here, we can add the class of C hyphen BTN. Then you have main, alt, transparent. Then you also have the sizing options. So let's go with C button main. And then we can go C button M, for example. And that makes it the medium version of the button. And then of course you had the button XL, so we can go BTN XL like this. And then that makes it kind of an oversized button. Then for buttons, you also have the transition. So if we search the word transition, then that's going to add that nice hover effect to this button. And there's a number of other utility classes available in the documentation. The main thing I wanted to demonstrate to you here is all of the available utility classes to create your custom layouts and how they can all be intertwined, whether it be size, spacing, colors, typography, all that kind of stuff. So have a look at the documentation and explore this further and let us know what you think.